I'm Mohammad Tariq and my dear friend and colleague, Mr. Chandrabhan Singh. I will be taking modern Indian history completely and he will be taking world history completely, both in optional <laughs> as well as in general studies, right? So the format is this, that uh, the first 15, 20 hours, uh, minutes, I will talk on two, three important issues related to optional, right? And then my friend would take. After that, question answer. So whatever doubts, whatever questions you have related to optional history, you are most welcome. And I hope all my online friends also listening and watching very carefully whatever I said so far and whatever questions you have, please ask after a few minutes. But first you listen very carefully because this is very important stage of your life. And choosing optional and right optional is very important. Since I have seen personally many students struggling in choosing the optional because they're not aware. They ask from their roommates, they ask from their friends who are as ignorant as you may be. Or sometimes some toppers. Each toppers has their own background. You don't know their background. Like last year topper was a history student, right? Luckily, I had opportunity to teach her for almost two and a half years in the campus and then here also. So many other students who were our students here in Vajiram and in our direct contact who got 280, 290s and 300 plus. So first important myth is this, that, sir, I'm bad, please, mm. please take it. Is this, that history does not score well, is absolutely wrong. If you take UPSC exam, either better, sir. If you take UPSC exam right from the British time, History is the most consistent subject. I met several secretary level IAS officers and IPS officers of late 70s, 80s and 90s batch. Many of them are my batch mates whose subject or one of the subject was history, right? And this is one subject which has maintained its consistency throughout the century. No other subject that I know as a student of history and as trainer of civil service exam. So the first myth is that it is not a scoring is wrong. Now on what basis people say they know four or five people around them. At the best, how many people who wrote main you know personally? How many people who appeared in interview you know personally? Honestly, hardly four or five. We have a data personally we know hundreds of students. Suppose here itself, 1,200 students appeared in interview. And we did it in mock also. We did it in classes also. So our data is based on our own students as well as UPSC data. So according to UPSC data, which my dear friend would also confirm, in the last 10 years when uh, we surveyed that major subject, there are eight, nine major subjects popular in civil service as far as optional is concerned. Which 89, I hope you all know that. History, geography, political science, sociology, anthropology, public administration, am I right? Now, out of these popular, the percentage of success is eight to 9% in the last 10 years. Percentage of success means if 100 appears, eight or nine would clear, whether geography, whether history, whether sociology, whether anthro, whether political science. Now, the number of candidates appear in political science would be more. So obviously, those 8% would be more in absolute number. You understand this? But the percentage would be same. I'm talking about major subject. I'm not talking a subject in geology, in which one candidate appeared and he passed. Success rate, 100%. It's like Ravi Shastri. He was captain of Indian cricket team for only one test match in which India won that test match. So his success rate is what? 100%. So he can proudly say no other player in the world has this 100% success rate. But how many test cricket he captained? 
only one. So at least you should have minimum, say, 50 matches who took. Then you take whether he is successful or not, rather than one and five. I hope you understood the point which I wanted to make it. The two subjects in which you have maximum success rate, 18 to 20, are law and medicine. But you can't take it if you're not a doctor and if you have not done LLB. So that success rate is higher, maybe because doctors are already laborious, maybe because only doctors check doctor's copy. You understand this point or not? Point I'm making is that since their subject, they have studied very well in universities, and only those good students write medicine paper. So that could be one reason why success rate in law and medicine is higher. Whereas in major subject, 8 to 9%. So first myth, history is not a scoring is wrong. Second myth, it's lengthy. Again, it's myth. The shortest syllabus is of language. Any language you take it, whether it is English or your mother tongue or any regional language, in terms of syllabus. Now, all the other size is same when it goes in, when you go into the details, when you look at it from the superficial, superficial point of view, then maybe anthropology looks smaller than, say, political science. But when you go into the inner details of the variety, varieties of tribes and the laws related to tribes in the world and India, then you would find that I thought tribe is one topic, but within tribe, there are 20 topics. So that you would know only when you have taken the subject and after two months you would realize that, oh my God, I thought anthropology was so a small topic. So UPSC, when they have framed the syllabus, they didn't want some students to have advantage over some other students. You understand this? So both the myth, which is very co common in the market, are wrong, which I'm telling on the basis of empirical evidence that language and literature syllabus is the smallest. If you can take it, you take it. But problem in literature is this, that there would be a topic called poetry. Now, most of you come from professional background. To understand one couplet, whether it is of Milton or it is Tagore or it is Ghalib, it may take whole week and you may not understand it. And some people can understand in five minutes. That is the beauty of poetry or literature. So literature is not like everybody's cup of tea. Many people have taken it because they thought it is short and I have some coaching in Drishti and some here, so I took it Hindi literature. But once they started reading Mahadevi Verma, and they understood, oh my God, Mahadevi Verma is different from this Kumar Vishwas. You get my point? He was taking interest in poetry after reading YouTube Kumar Vishwas. But the poetry of Nirala and Pant is totally different from the poetry which you see in the YouTube. This is the point that you can't take it just because the language and literature are very small. So after these demystifying the two myths, let's come why one should take history as an optional. When I was not teaching history optional, even then I listed two subjects. If somebody takes, they would be better in UPSC, GS, essay, and interview, whether objective or subjective, and whether in interview, which two subjects he or she would be far better than any other candidate. One is history, one is sociology. You're getting my point or not? Because both these two subjects gives an in-depth understanding of society, culture, and most importantly, in bureaucracy, what you're going to actually deal, human being, their problems, their psyche, their temperament, their behavior, their culture, their food habit, their dress code, how hijab became a big issue in Karnataka, you must have noticed, how wedge and non-wedge becomes very important, how caste matters in India, 
you all know that that entire karnataka election lingayat and voka linga you heard hear it up and bihar it's all about caste which subject would give you the maximum depth to understand caste class women gender history and sociology no other subject would give it so good ias officer would she or he who understand people and their problems so these two subjects would give you a depth now advantage with history is unlike sociology that history gives a 360 degree views of a problem sociologist would only discuss from one angle political scientist one angle but historians have to take help of geography of natural science of law of language of psychology of government policies of social behavior to write about a society about a culture so when you read bepan chandra sumit sarkar ram, uh, ram sharan sharma satish chandra irfan habib and you would read some of them then you would find that actually you had very superficial knowledge about your own culture and about your own society so all the issue which we are facing today in india and world is directly connected with what happened in last 300 years if suppose you're talking about china and america fighting and if you are good in world history that how post industrial revolution how world war 1 world war 2 cold war and post cold war created a new world order in which we are having a situation where we live in a multipolar multi institutional world rather than once you had bipolar world then you had unipolar world you understand this now this you can understand much easily once you read world history which my friend would help you now once you read world history of last 300 years then the current ir would be like a cake walk we often say that the international relation and foreign policy is actually an extension of post cold war and till cold war you would read directly in world history syllabus no other student would read it so history would help you not only directly your subject but indirectly its impact would be on your paper 2 for instance constitutional development right from charter act before that regulating act and pits india act till 1947 india's independence act once you read and then constituent assembly debate i was reading only in uh, today's newspaper that you know the judgment came yesterday two very historic related to delhi government and governor role in maharashtra so the author was quoting what ambedkar said in constituent assembly what is the true representative means and what should be the power of elected government so a student who read ambedkar gandhi nehru in constituent assembly and then also read supreme court judgment she can connect much faster and better than any other candidate so the depth which history would provide as i told very few subject would provide depth in your paper 2 so paper 2 is what your gs i'm talking about international relation and india's foreign policy and polity and governance but history would help you to understand that paper much better then you have a paper 4 ethics and morality you know that in which you are going to study some stalwarts buddha mahavira as a student of history we often discuss christ prophets guru nanak their thoughts vivekanand tagore and what principles they laid down on the basis of which they wanted edifies of a society on what basis the morality just like there is a term called constitutional morality if you look at the judgment said that udav thakre gave resignation on the basis of morality you remember this and on the same basis he is asking eknath shinde to resign 
and legal experts said had he not resigned and faced the vote of confidence and still he would have been defeated then the supreme court could have restored his government you remember this so now the question emerges that should we go legally or morally now when you read gandhi gandhi would say go morally when you read some legal experts abhishek manu sangvi he would say go legally so in paper for ethics when you would have a dilemma and in most cases you would have a dilemma because administrator would face dilemma so on what basis you are taking a decision that is going to decide how much marks you are going to get in paper paper four and very tricky paper paper four i have seen where students get 80 to 140 and you see the gap between 80 to 140 one of my student he got third all india rank in 2013, Rachit Raj, third topper. His score was 146 in paper four. And he told me, and his option was history, right? And he told me that since he had a very solid base of principle, you understand this? So he didn't read in, in 2013, it was a very new subject. Perhaps it was the first or second year. Uh, paper 4 was introduced at that time and hardly there was any book or any coaching at that time. So he read only one lexicon, he told me. But he said he relied heavily on the principle of Buddha or Gandhi or Vivekanand or the major one. So when you're taking or Bhagavad Gita, some stand on some solid principle, most likely your decision would be right. When a bureaucrat do not have any principle, what would happen? Samir Van Khade. What would happen? Pooja Singhal. You heard these two names? Two recent bureaucrats in, in the news tell me. Samir Van Khade, even today his name was in newspaper. IRS 2008 badge. What was he doing? You all know that. Pooja Singhal in Jharkhand. 19 crore. You know that? Now, this is because their moral compass was missing. So in the service also, such person would face huge problem. And I'm sure at this young age, we all are idealist. We don't want to be corrupt. We don't want to be inefficient, bureaucrat. Maybe some of us at certain stage becomes corrupt. But those who remain honest, one reason is that their moral compass is very strong. So once you're a student of history, your moral compass would become automatically much stronger. So it's greatest advantage to more places when you write essay. One topic every year they are directly asking from history. Any subject from world history or Indian history, sometimes directly from Gandhi. Be the change what you want to be in others. This is Gandhi's statement, right? So not necessarily directly they would quote, but they would derive from some very historical analysis given by the great thinkers of Plato to Rousseau to Buddha to Mahavira, which is called universal truth. And large number of essays nowadays they're asking based on those universal truths in which human beings have agreed upon. There is no differences among the intellectuals. Once you understood it, you can crack at least two essay out of eight. And how much you have to write? Only two. And one problem I notice many students are facing in essay is this. What is the question in the essay? Have you noticed that? And after reading all essay, they do not know kisko chue, kisko chode, sab paraya. Now, a student of history and sociology, I bet, can never miss at least two, sometimes three topic, because he have read it already either in my class or Chandrabansar class or our other friends classes, or you would yourself read in the Vipan Chandra, in Romila Thapar and R.S. Sharma, because those debates had already been there in the past, ancient past, medieval past, modern past, and history would help you to write your essay. You're getting advantage? Another advantage while taking history as an optional, when you appear in interview, 
there is no interview in upsc in which they would not ask questions related to freedom struggle or constitution or great stalwarts of freedom struggle or something related recent vd savarkar versus mahatma gandhi are you getting or medieval history has been removed in ncert completely or partly what is your view what is your take some names would be changed by the time you would go who knows lucknow is no more lucknow who knows gaziabad is no more gaziabad so what is my point because i remember when some of my student went then uh, mughal sarai name was changed that year and at least from two student they asked one was from history so the student who was from history background gave a very good answer uh, sometime i will tell you not here in my class right that what was her answer related to name changing what is your view because name change is not new it has happened throughout the world after all burma and myanmar after all mesopotamia and iraq you know that even own our bombay madras calcutta <clears throat> name has been changed so there are certain uh, local reason cultural reason there are certain administrative reasons there are certain emotional reason but there are political reason also right so a good student of history would also know what are the problems we face when you change the name and this is what upsc would help you uh, would ask you and our subject like history would help you how to handle this this type of question in interview so while studying ancient medieval modern and world your 10% to 20% interview part is also prepared now one more area <clears throat> which is often neglected and not understood well by student advantage with history and partly true with sociology also but i would say more with history your skill of writing and expression power would improve in the next few months because history is full of literature each historian uses his skill of language to express the same thing what was written by other writers differently so different interpretation is only possible with different linguistic skill now if you say the same thing in certain beautiful style it would attract the attention of the reader and if you say the same thing in a simple style look कहते हैं अक्सर कि प्रपोजल करो तो अच्छे से करो कुछ लैंग्वेज अच्छा सा हो ताकि अगर आपका प्रपोजल रिजेक्ट हो लैंग्वेज की वजह से एक्सेप्ट हो जाए यू आर गेटिंग माई पॉइंट तो यू मस्ट है नोटिस आई रिमेंबर जावेद अख्तर सेड वंस दैट इन हिज कॉलेज डेज ही वुड राइट लेटर्स फॉर हिज फ्रेंड एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम हिज स्ट्राइक रेट वॉज नाइंटी फाइव परसेंट इट वुड बी राइट एंड देन ही वुड आस समोसा एंड टी पार्टी from the friend because his skill of writing was very good here you have to attract whom the teacher who is checking your copy now one thing which i personally noticed during evaluating answer scripts of a student is that a large number of students come from professional background engineering or mba or mca now their language was good in that subject but now you have to write four gas one essay and you have to appear in interview and if your language remains same you would not impress but once you read history your language would become polished it would become literary and this would be done with the help of our classes you would find keywords in our classes you would find the nuances of vocabularies in english itself and if not shakespeare and shashi tharoor at least you would become chetan bhagat you understand this or not so even to come to the level of chetan bhagat english you have to do something in the next few months and history would help to improve your language i hope i cleared all these myth as well as why should one take history now one last point and then i will invite my friend in prelims gs 100 questions would be asked am i right there are five important subjects 
since last 20 years as far as the prelims is concerned. History and culture, we treat it as same. It's not actually different because Mauryan art, Mughal art, painting, sculpture, literature, it's part of history. Even in our universities, the department is called history and culture. Only in the last few years, some coaching institution have started treating culture as a separate subject. But here, our history teachers would teach culture part. So if you take history and culture, geography, with environment. Again, environment is taught by some science faculty also, but geography teachers also. Economy, mainly Indian economy, partly world economy. Polity constitutions in science and technology in India. The focus is in India since post-independence in the field of biology to physics to astronomy to medicines to nuclear to other renewable energies, etc. Right? These are five majors. Now, out of these five, history alone would cover 18 to 22 questions since last 10 years. 18 to 22 questions. Can you imagine the role of history? 20% straightforward. Now, a student who have taken history as an optional, out of 20, he can do 19, 18, guaranteed. He do not have to do anything extra, whereas others would struggle even eight. So this eight question means 16 marks edge you have. Now, suppose somebody has taken a subject sociology. Now, sociology may help in other area, as I told. But sociology directly would not help in your prelims. Suppose somebody has taken public art or anthro or any engineering subject or any literature subject, then all the five is new to you. But at least one subject is rock solid, that is history. And since some of the questions of history, which we call as game changes, some of the ancient questions, some of the medieval questions, some of the modern question. Game changer means that out of five and a half lakh who would appear in this exam, out of 10 lakh who would actually apply, hardly 1,000 to 2,000 would correctly correct those questions. So typical. This is a particular temple and this is addict from where this addict has been taken. Unless you have done history subject, you can't even imagine that how many Upanishads are there. And when Dara Shiko translated 52 Upanishads, what is the name of that book? That you would never know as a student of GS. That you would know only as a student of history optional. Because that book was in news recently. Sire Akbar. Look at my point. Now, the point I'm making is this, that this type of typical question, which is very rare, is coming through history optional, but would help you in cracking GS. So that means at least your GS part of prelim and don't underestimate prelims. I know personally hundreds of students who pass IRS next time fail in prelims, IPS next time fail in prelims and twice failed. So finally had to join IPS. So prelims, I call it the most slippery exam of this entire exam, it is like catch at the slip in the first over of test match. And you know the speed at which. So most students would be in the bracket of 92 to 95 as far as the marks in the prelims is concerned. But the student who is good in history can score 100. And now she would have no worry after appearing in prelims. So any student who have written optional with history, decent student, which I'm sure you all are, then at least prelims part, is not a problem and you can make it much better than others. I hope I have cleared whatever the points I wanted. And, and as far as interest or boring part is concerned, I'm sure 100% there is no subject on earth as interesting as history, provided you read it carefully, ancient or medieval or modern or world. Each part, even a stone age, when I read, I found it so interesting. Ek bin saani hai, sir patthar hai, 70,000 years, sapiens. And I was shocked to find ones very interesting. 
how people cross Australia from Indonesia around 20,000 years ago. How people cross from America to Russia around 40,000 years ago. There is a beautiful book called Sapiens written by a historian called Yuval Nuhari, you know, from Israel. And he has given a very beautiful description in that uh, book that how, and that is all empirical, not imagination, right? Evidence that how from this, you know, Alaska, you know, this in America to Siberia, the people crossed first time and the major America part and how they originated first from the central parts of East Africa, nearby Kenya, and spread all over the world. Then another line, and then I will invite, sir, uh, sorry if I have taken more time, that in the earliest days of human beings, 70,000, 60,000, 50,000 human beings, when we were yet to emerge as a homo sapiens, we were just sapiens, right? What food we ate first, veg or non-veg? It's a big debate. You get my point. Often people claim that, okay, human being by nature is vegetarian. Human being by nature is non-vegetarian. Both give. What science says? What history tells? So this through history, we came to know that the earliest ancient people were hunter-gatherers. You know this? Now, in hunter-gatherers, they obviously ate both veg and non-veg, whichever was available. But which part of meat they ate first? Are you getting my point? Which part of meat? Suppose there is a deer. Okay. So which part of the meat man might have eaten first? Can you imagine? Let me give you options, right? One is flesh, one is eyes, one is ear, one is hand, feet, etc. etc. Okay, those who are non-vegetarian, they eat every part. Okay. Egyptians even eat eyes of the bakra and bear. You know that. Indians do not eat it. Please don't mind. But uh, I'm just telling you this is a fact. Northeast may food habit thoda lag hai. Ab agar aap China or Mongolia or udhar jaoge, to wahan ye chipkili bhi khate hain log. Malum hai ki nahi? Snake bhi khate hain. Even dogs khate hain. Bhot shock se. Apne India mein bhi food habit. But I'm asking which part of the flesh they ate first and give the logic because history is written on the basis of facts and logic. He said, according to Yuval Nohari, bone marrow was the first thing human being ate because it was hunted by animals, then by vultures. So there was nothing left for a man. And the only thing which was left was certain tissues in the bone marrow. Now, what is interesting, today it would be the last part. In the sapiens era, it was the first thing which the man. Now, this is all very interesting story. I'm talking about a stone age in which Koinsani is so interesting to read and to know this. Another interesting thing I came to know that God by nature, since sapiens have created you both, vegetarian as well as non-vegetarian. Give two examples. One is your teeth. You just check it, two types of animals. One is called cat family. Panther, tiger, loin. What kind of teeth they have? Canine. You know the word canine? What does it mean? No, it doesn't mean sharp. Canine in Greek means dog. Okay? Aap kisi ko bolo tumhari daat canine hai, toh kahega achcha hai. Phir koi tumhari daat kutte jaisi hai. <laughs> Kitna bura lagega. Lekin canine ka matlab hi toh kutta hota hai. Dog. Okay. So it is sharp. Help in cutting flesh. Then cattle. Flat. Help in cutting grass. Check your own teeth. Both. Poor, very sharp. And then rest flat. That means if God wished to make you pure vegetarian, then why he gave canine teeth? Now see the logic. In the cold climate North Europe, Siberia, there is no agriculture for several months due to extreme cold. 
so how the people would survive only flesh now you understand this in country like india where you have vegetation easily available you can grow grass because for agriculture you need minimum 4 degree maximum 46 degree cc centigrade to grow below 4 above 46 not possible so we live in different climate zone so food is determined by climate religious scriptures came very late so all the entire debate in history that it is banned or not banned is a recent phenomenon a student of history can argue better in the court of law or a good bureaucrats when framing the law he can say sir it's not possible the people in coastal area their entire economy is based on fish and even the smallest person earn 500 600 rupees if you go to the coast of kerala tamil nadu andhra per day and their entire economy runs on fish and india has developed a lot what is called blue revolution you heard it or not so even pink revolution india is doing it and a lot of export india is doing to many other gulf countries to new zealand out of the what is called meat of red meat what is called so the point is that a good bureaucrat with history background would have a better explanation so you got it teeth wala example i learned it from the history another last example a loin cannot digest grass wo apne bachpan mein kahawat sunne the sher ghas nahi khata isliye nahi ke uska arrogance hai ki hum ghas nahi khate wo kha hi nahi sakta wo bimar ho jayega uska digestive system is designed in such a way that a loin cannot digest grass a goat and cattle cannot digest flesh but a human being can digest both because our digestive system is such that our tongue may not like it because our taste is evolved over a period of time his digestive system would allow him to digest this sense you would learn more through history than any other subject right so i hope i have covered whatever doubts you may have whether i should take it or not or i can assure you that four of us here teach four parts of history ancient by our dear friend mr pravin dikshit sahab and medieval by our dear friend rohan shrivastav sahab modern world and world history by our dear friend chandaban singh sahab and modern indian history i will be helping you so each one have done their homework very well about the subject and there are also study materials. We have very well crafted class notes and plus additional. So if you take class notes, study materials, which we are giving you regularly class to class and some selected books, you don't have to read too many books because if you read too much book, you may become historian, not IS. Very limited book, but very, very precise material and books. So then, I have no doubt that each of you can do it 270 plus 280 plus in optional. The moment you do 270 plus in optional, your selection is guaranteed. Now, if you do something better in GS and better in interview, you can be in IS, IPS, IRS rank as many of my other students have done it, right? So I would now invite my friend Chandabhaz Singh, sir, so to shed some lights and then we will be ready for questions right thank you very much please sir <clears throat> okay uh, i think i'm audible yeah. so most of the things sir has covered and made my life easier so i'll just uh, take it from where sir has left uh, recently a debate has been going on in, in fact elon musk has also said that the developments in ai artificial intelligence should be put on a halt at least for the next six months and definitely you would have been reading about it so many arguments have been forwarded one of the very interesting argument was that what is the biggest peril or the danger that ai poses to mankind is that ai or artificial intelligence is going to take something that only human beings have that none of the other creatures have and that is our ability to frame stories. In fact, I was very much inspired when sir spoke about uh, Sapiens Harari. In that book, you would find that in the first chapter, he says 
that why humans have crafted their civilization unlike other creatures it is not that an elephant is not intelligent is because of our ability to frame stories develop stories and live stories and that is why i believe i say i was discussing with sir also that taking history optional is not only a choice it is but your natural instinct because in history what you do is that you go through a story ancient medieval modern modern world and then you analyze it so that is something that we naturally have evolved to do all these ages isn't it even in our childhood we love to you know uh, listen to lullabies by our grandmothers we love to hear anecdotes from our father mother so taking history i am coming to the academic part but taking history is something that suits human behavior human intellect or it is something in sync with human evolution first thing that is something that i was when sir said i just borrowed <clears throat> second is uh, most of the things sir has said and uh, i would just add one thing that taking history optional would give you a context for every text you for example what is happening in manipur only in the morning i was reading the front line in that front line the the topic reads that what is actually <coughs> happening in manipur is not because of the immediate factors but there are deeper historical roots so if you want to solve the problem you have to go to that when you read about northeast insurgency you know that why it is trickier to actually carve out the demanded territorial states or autonomous zones which have been by various tribes is because of the overlapping demands so for that you have to read anyways post independent india and <clears throat> the last argument which again sir has covered is that whether you take history optional or not you will have to devote two and a half to three months for history either in gs or otherwise so one of the arguments which i was also because i was discussing with a student last year that what prevents you from taking history then the student said that sir it is very lengthy in fact uh, on youtube or everywhere people write that history is a lengthy syllabus then i would counter it by saying that it is not a lengthy syllabus because in 6 months our syllabus sir has designed in 6 months you are covering not only history optional but you are covering the entire portion for everywhere wherever history will be applied in your gs optional or even in sa and if you don't take otherwise also you will have to prepare one other optional and read history for 3 months which will not give you that depth which is actually required nowadays in prelims as sir has said so whether you want it whether you do not want it you will have to develop some understanding in topics related to historical thought giving an example it happened a very uh, interesting coincidence that i was teaching romanticism in class and the very year a question appeared in essay that history of mankind has been a struggle between man of reason and man of emotions in the class itself after the mains examination students were able to relate to it because not that they knew about romanticism they understood the background or the context in which romanticism developed in the post enlightenment thought so that is that is the beauty of the subject that the more you are able to relate to it and you are able to apply sir was giving wonderful examples i was just i i just wish that i had a notebook to make some notes like you had so i was sitting there so <clears throat> it will give you an insight which will help you directly or indirectly in every area and needless to say that in the last 3 years one of the tough areas in your mains examination has been your essay paper earlier in essay necessarily questions were asked from education agriculture but now they are asking from philosophical thought from historical thought a question was asked related to the thought of hegel history repeats itself first as a fast then as a tragedy so now hegel is someone whom you will not come across if you are you don't read history or in some ways i would say sociology and to talk about sociology the evolution of sociology as a subject in its modern form has its based in basis in enlightenment in sociology also students read that commercial evolution 
brought about socio political changes which led to the rise of middle class and the middle class was the harbinger of change all across the world so either you read it here or you have to gather it in some way or the other history has to be read there is there are no second doubts about it now <clears throat> the other area of concern which genuine aspirants is that is and why history has not been a very scoring subject first of all it is a scoring subject sir has, i was discussing with him that 8 to 9% of sub success rate has been there in fact i have data also i can share with you we were writing that all the subjects in which in the last 8 9 years sir more than 500 candidates have appeared in the mains examination they have a success rate of 8 to 9% if you leave aside medical science and law but still yes there are certain concerns which have cropped up with respect to history as a subject in mains one is that students don't pay a lot of attention or they are not given adequate guidance in your map mapping area of paper 1 second modern indian history as sir would say only few people would give you that thought as sir was able to play with swami vivekananda mahatma gandhi galeb so that is the thing most of the times this thought or interdisciplinary approach of history with say modern indian history and modern world history is sometimes missing either students are not able to translate that in your answer writing because of which the marks that they get is an average most of the students who complete their paper in history paper they they get to 40 marks you would rarely find that a person would come and say that i have completed the paper and i got 160 no and why is it that because the best part about history optional is that sir please correct me if i say it wrong history optional paper is highly predictable if you go through the last 30 years questions pyqs that we do in discuss in the class that is that is what we do in the class that in our six months five and a half months duration we not only discuss and deliver content we also discuss all the difficult pyqs there are sectional tests which are evaluated by the faculties faculties sir started the practice of having a one to one session with students so as to understand what are their personal strength and which are the areas where they have to work a bit and coming to modern world history let me tell you that 3 4 years back world history used to be studied from the point of view of what is known as eurocentrism or europe centric history but in the last 2 years modern world history has become more like a global history so the moment you go into 20th century whether you read sne mahajan or norman lowe you would be finding it interesting intriguing also that whether you are reading history or is it ir people talk about arab israel dispute but in our first class in some of the students who are here are from gs i discuss about the dispute between abrahamic religion i hope some of you remember so if you do not understand what is the basic core of dispute despite having so many similarities despite having the so many roots among abrahamic religion why are they why they have been in conflict all these years right from the crusades in fact even before that between the christians and the jews then you will not be able to appreciate the arab israel dispute recently syria was again in inducted into the arab league so these are the things which definitely you will read in your newspaper in your ir but studying with history will give you a complete picture and even if you write that you are able to write that context one to two lines in your answer then the person who is checking your answer will understand that this chap this kid has a very holistic understanding and the moment we will discuss more and more of thinkers now talking about thinkers most of the political social thinkers which you people read in political science sociology are covered in greater detail in modern world history i think some of you who are already from our gs batch can resonate with the fact we have already started discussing john locke rousseau montesquieu karl marx thomas hobbes and the moment you read about buddhism jainism mahatma gandhi 
you are able to play with this idea. In fact, in, in your ethics paper, there is a clearly earmarked portion the discuss the difference and the similarities between Indian school of thought or Indian philosophy and Western philosophy. So by the time you reach or you start preparing for your ethics paper, you already have a very sound base. So do not worry about this fact that <clears throat> you are from non-engineering, non-history background or it takes a hell lot of time to prepare or it is not scoring or UPSC is not favorable towards it or it is not one of the hit subjects. No, it is not. Last year we had a history topper. Maybe next year we will have a physics topper. But that does not make any subject relevant or not relevant. A subject <coughs> is relevant on the basis or it is how you are inclined, how you are able to inculcate the knowledge and translate it into various areas. I tell it in my modern world history class. It may happen that you may not get a single question from modern world history, but the historical thought or the understanding will help in your modern India. What happened when the Britishers lost its control over 13 colonies, then they paid attention, greater attention to their administration in India and they enacted the Pitt India Act 1784. Mahatma Gandhi's support to Khilafat movement that sir will discuss and then I will be discussing about a person who was a sole revolutionary in Middle East that is Mustafa Kamal Pasha, a person who was able to challenge the Western domination. So Gandhiji said that yes. I support the Khilafat movement not only on the religious cause, but also as an international factor. That is something Irfan Habib has written in his book, The Indian National Movement. So <clears throat> I think most of you have uh, made up your mind. You would have definitely understood. As far as book lists and other things are concerned, it will be taken care of. So now I leave the <clears throat> platform open for all of you, both online and offline students that please ask anything, anything that you have in your mind so that after today, and our course starts on 15 June. So in these 15 days, uh, I think one month, in these one month, you are able to best prepare even before you join the classes, you are able to maximize this one month. So for that, I leave it to you. Please ask as many doubts you want. Online students also, I think, Yes. Any question, please? Yeah. Sir, uh, my question is that if class material will be sufficient or do I need to make notes separately? So, um, means uh, you were talking the syllabus uh, comprehensively that I know I see you, but uh, uh, the notes which we will you will uh, make, make a so that is uh, apart from that do I need to make separate notes uh, like uh, topic wise which have been given in syllabus now let me clarify a few doubts about coaching institutions in general if you think that coaching institution would make you an IS then you are doing a mistake are you getting my point my personal assessment is this, that 90% job is yours. Our jobs, 40 teacher mil ke bhi, 10% se zada hai nahi. One can discuss and dispute 10% hai ke 15% hai. But wo hai majority aapka khel. But without that 10 to 15% help, you cannot make out your 80%. You can my point or not? Because what I have to read, from where to read, how to handle a topic, say permanent settlement, how to topics handle renaissance, how to handle a topic, why Germany cannot alone be blamed for the outbreak of Second World War. Right? This was a question asked. For that, you need some help. So our classes, notes, materials would help. But that would guide you in which direction I have to go with the help of, as I told, one standard textbook and our material. You have to make notes on each topic. Now, there are different ways of making notes. Some people make holistic notes, 500 words, 200 words each. Somebody, some people have understood it, 
take just bullet point. And when it comes to writing, they can write it down. So there is no hard and fast rule. In most cases, some topic you would yourself make full notes. Some topics you would know, okay, only by bullet point in 50 words, but I can elaborate in 300 words. Maximum you have to write in 300 words. Secondly, you have to write in 150 words in few questions, right? But you must know how to write in 300 words, 150 words, right? So I, I'll be taking some of the online questions and then maybe you can. Uh, one question that has been uh, popping up frequently, sir, mm. that uh, should students from commerce graduate opt for history? Mm. Uh, does it make a difference uh, which bachelor background we are from? So please answer and then we one can... of my student, he is IPS right now in Bengal. He had two options, history and commerce in 2011, I think, when the, we had two options, right? A lot of the students, you know, those who studied history are not necessarily going to make it in this exam. This exam is about certain qualities which you have to develop in the coming months. Whatever your background, you have doctors who have taken history. You have engineers yes. who have taken history, philosophers who have taken uh, read philosophy in graduation and here he has taken history. So I have seen it people from diverse background taking history or any eight subjects. So it depends upon your likes, your own temperament. Right? And your modern world history faculty is <clears throat> an engineer by training. And I, then I did banking and then I came into this. So I, sir, always encourages me. So it doesn't matter. In history optional, uh, the syllabus is such that you have to read a bit more from your graduation and less from your post-graduation. And for that, your analytical uh, ability would be tested more. Yes, if you have a history background, it you have an exposure, definitely. You have an exposure for that. But even if you don't have, with proper guidance, with proper strategy, you can clear this examination in first one attempt. Praveen Dikshit, sir, will definitely be teaching your ancient India, as sir has said. So, four of us. Uh, yes, Mustafa Kamal Pasha. Some of uh, them are, were not able to resonate. Mustafa Kamal Pasha did abolish uh, caliphate. In fact, he talks about republicanism, but uh, he basically established a dictatorship type of government. But Mahatma Gandhiji's support for Khilafat movement was basically for Turkish nationalism. Sir, might correct me. So, that is what I said. Uh, for working professionals, we have now, I think, sir, evening batch, 5.30. Yeah, we have 5. So you can watch recorded lectures. So <clears throat> for now, we don't have a morning batch. How to memorize the lengthy chronology? I think people people uh, do remember those dates, which they want to. Actually, you remember a lot of phone numbers, isn't it? Ten you remember, digit. yes, 10-digit ten, ten mobile, ten digit number. mobile numbers. You remember birthdays. So you would remember dates, but even if you forget the dates, for example, uh, you do not remember the year in which printing press was invented. I say in class also, you can just refer through that instead of 1444, you can say that it was in the uh, first half of 15th century. But everybody would remember the uh, year of Quit India movement and other things. So don't worry, don't worry about the dates. Eventually, the more you will be using it, it is just like an address, pin code, so you'll remember. So don't worry about that. So I'm really confused because some people and teachers are telling taking history optional is like making your life hell. Okay. So that is interesting. I want to take history, but I'm very scared. So which are those optionals which can make our life heaven, sir? Means, <laughs> I can so, guarantee as I told that so, there is no other subject as interesting, at least what I have understood through studying other subjects. It's a public myth hai, perceptions hai, right in fact while studying history aapko ek pata chalega, what is the difference between reality and perception about anything which is happening in the world and you would be the first to know in a whatsapp or a news is it real or fake in this age what we call post truth one of the biggest challenge is to know truth versus hype truth versus lies a student of history would know first because you would develop certain qualities. One such quality is whatever we say, what is your source? The moment your source is authentic, 
then your argument is authentic. For instance, when we say India is mother of democracy, what is your source? On what basis you said UPSC can ask? Because it is published by government in all G20 holdings. Have you noticed that? Mother of democracy. Then the Greeks must be wondering that what we were doing in 6th century BC. You understand this? There is a term called Gantant. You heard it? Mm. Gan in Buddhist time. Is that Gantant is what we have the democracy? I'm not giving you answer. I'm just giving you a question. So as a student of history, you would be in a better position to accept or reject any claim by any government in the world. Because often what happens, each civilization claims the best thing happened first in their world. The Chinese are claiming, the Americans are claiming, the Europeans are claiming, we are claiming, Arabs are claiming. But a student of history would be the first to tell, no, paper came from China. No, gunpowder came from China. Zero came from India. Decimal system came from India. This drainage system came from India. Only historians would have the guts because they have knowledge and they have accurate knowledge that which particular branch of political ideas, of cultural ideas originated from where. So if you study history, then Knowledge is given by almost every civilization, right from ancient time till date. You understand this? So you would not live in a fool's paradise, which most of us live because of lack of history. So history is certainly not hell at all. This is one of the most heaven. In fact, I have never seen a historian, because I met many and worked with some of them, a boring person about other, but historians, he can switch the topic from one end and it would be interesting. So you would be becoming the most interesting person in your family and your friend, most demanding person. I can assure once you read history. Okay, sir. After, after one month mm -hmm. of class in ancient and medieval history, I can assure you that you'll be able to, uh, every, anybody will throw a fact and you will be able to distinguish whether it is a myth a hypothesis or a theory so just wait uh <clears throat> yeah there is a question related to august no we august, have one yes. batch here in june and another batch in october I suppose. yes yes two batches one in june one in october so that means between june to october we have to finish this batch and october to february or march we will finish the second batch right twice five months each yes Yes, please. Hmm. Okay, you know, firstly, let me demystify one more thing. If you talk about professional historians, they're not biased. Their interpretations are different. It is like this. One judge of Supreme Court interpret a law differently. Another judge comes and interpret differently. But you cannot say the previous one was biased. He interpreted the same law differently because we see the same thing differently. So firstly, you have to make a big difference between historians and non-historians. Unfortunately, many subjects which of history, which you know, like Padmavat, you heard it? The entire Rajasthan started burning on this issue. One is what is history and one is what is people believe it. Now, if you're mixing up, then there is a confusion. But historians, as far as historians, they have different school, which evolved over a period of time. Now, 
what you are supposed to write in this exam is some of the most balanced means widely accepted on like why Gandhi withdrew after Chauri Chaura. Marxist says differently than nationalist. There are two different views. It's not like one is biased. It look, one is using different tools of historical research. Another is using a different tools of historical research. The moment you use different tools, your interpretation would be different. Another difference. Somebody is writing about Gandhi 1960. I am writing in 2023. So my source may be better than the person who wrote in 1960. Maybe some hidden letters of Gandhi not aware by that historian. So new researches, new interpretation would keep coming. And that is what our job and your job is to make you aware. So do not worry about the biases. Now, as far as controversy part of history is concerned, if you take entire syllabus, 10% hardly is controversial. On 90% historians are unanimous. I'm not talking about politicians and media people. That is not the question. But as sir has rightly said, the most predictable question if you get it in any subject is history. And in fact, my own assessment is that if you just work on 150 question, 150 question of ancient medieval modern world all put together, and you rehearse it two, three times. You have to write ultimately 18, 19 question. And that 18, 19 question would definitely come from that 150 question. You get my point or not? So the point is that you just have to know which 150 question I have to prepare. So we will give, he will give questions. Not only PYQ that you can get only yourself. But the moment we will start a topic, we will discuss how the question could be asked or had already been asked. Now, one more source which we have is in the honors paper and PG exam of different universities, central universities. What were the question asked? We are aware about it. You may not. You may not get it. So what was asked in DU and JNU, Jamia and Aligarh and BHU? We get that question. After all, history is same, historian is same. You get my point or not? So the questions would be, core of the question would be same, only language would be different. So if we take those questions also and help you that you rehearse in this 150 question, then you would not make it, miss it at all. I hope I answered this point of your question. And do not worry about the controversy at all. I know that as Ramchandra Guha wrote, every third Indian thinks he's an expert in history, especially in modern history. The moment Gandhi, Nehru, Subhash, Bhagat, Patel, you think I know it. But actually, you just read it casually. You did not read a single research paper on Bhagat Singh. But you have on your Facebook Bhagat Singh picture, as Kejriwal has in his room. But I doubt whether he read Bhagat Singh, that famous pamphlet, Why I Am an Atheist, or The Lost Leader, or the speeches which he gave. Are you getting my point? We don't read it, but we have views without reading Gandhi, without reading Nehru. That is by media and politician. So do not worry at all. Most of the questions are predictable. And the controversy is very interesting academic controversy. That academic controversy we will discuss. Not controversy, I will say academic discussion, academic debate. The public controversy, they would never ask whether Padmavat was real or a fictitious character, at least in history optional paper, they would never ask this question. You understand this point? Yes. Also in historical debates, you don't have to give your opinion. I think, sir, you have yes. to just quote historians' opinions. We are not here to judge. It means We are no one to say that uh, mm. Jawaharlal Nehru or Hitler is solely responsible. If a question is asked that was Hitler so solely responsible for the outbreak of Second World War, then in that case, you have to give evidences. What are the opinions? Just click. Uh, Leave it there. Yeah, one student is asking which portion is more important. You know, all the four ancient medieval modern world are equally important. So I will take 25, 25, 25, 25. Yes. You know, two questions you have to do in any case from mm. uh, each of the section: world yes. history, modern history, ancient yes. history, medieval history. The fifth question is your choice. You yes. can do it from world history or modern. You can do it ancient or you can do it from medieval. And sometimes uh, my practical ex experience is this, 
that suppose I prepared with this thought that I would do three from modern history and two from world history. But when I went in exam hall and then I realized, my God, modern history is not just one. It's two. Let's do either Hitler, hai, udar Masluni, hai, udar world history. Hai. So I will do at the end three from world history. The same thing happened in ancient and medieval. So you prepare with your strategy, but be ready for last moment change. Because sometimes a tricky question may come from that area which you thought is strong. And here a simple question came. So I would attempt those questions in which I can get more marks. So you have to be ready for both. So each section are equally important in this exam. And never underestimate anyone. UPSC has made it very good balance. The structure of the classes will be such that generally uh, 15 days we'll have... Uh... I think 15 or three weeks we'll have a paper two. Yeah. Sometimes four weeks for a month, for example, we'll have paper two. Tariq sir will take classes for uh, three to four days a week. Then for the rest, I'll take that will go on for four weeks. Then paper one will start means that is how we do it. We do not have all the four subjects running in a month. So Rohan sir and Praveen sir will be doing it together. Mostly it is like that. We have been doing that paper last one. year. Paper and one. paper two. Paper so two. suppose whole month paper one, whole month paper, paper two. two. So we are we uh, we are sharing. And generally in a week, six days we take it. Six Sundays, days. yes. Or maybe some other days. But sometime because we are also taking GS class. So sometime we will announce. You would get all information. The idea is that your time is not wasted. But in a span of five months, we have to cover the syllabus as per the UPSC requirement and standard. Let me take one question. You know, he's asking, uh, what is the contribution of World War II for India? You know, this is a specific topic which we can do it only in class. So that, of course, we can't take those type of question here. Yes. Any other question you people have? Let so me some of the students me... are asking for book list, actually. I, I yeah, that think... also we will give it here. So we book can't list give and everything it, uh... will be taken care of. Don't worry. The resources part will be taken and care And you know, of. before I go... Otherwise, also, take... on the portal, we'll post it. The book list. Don't worry. Uh, before I go to that uh, question, too much books we don't suggest. None of us would suggest. In fact, our formula is, and this is successful mantra. If you have 10 books of history at your table, donate 9. Read one book 10 times. I mean, this is just to tell the importance of reading one crucial book. For instance, if you're reading modern and not reading Bipan Chandra or Shekhar Bandhu Padhyay, you're missing something very terribly. Without that, you can't go to that level of scoring 270 plus. To get 200, 220, 230, you can get it from study material and classes. But to get 270 plus, you have to add value. And that value addition is only possible at two places. One is class and one is very good textbook written by expert. Kuch chido ka upar walo ne alternate nahi banaya. Kuch chido ka banaya. Isse koi non-wage nahi khata. To protein ka alternate hai. Kya kya hai batao? Dal hai. Paneer hai. Soya bean hai, bohut achcha, tumne badaya nahi, itna achcha tha, hai na? Suraj ki roshni ka alternate nahi hai, is dharti par. Am I right? Ya artificial light nahi hai. Agar suraj ki roshni aapko kuch dino tak na mile, bimari to chodo, depression ho jata hai. Jitne maare friend Norway or Finland ho kar aayin, kehne yaar mat jana. Chaar din ke baad depression ho jata. Suraj nahi dikta. Are you getting my point? Because we don't value how much importance of the sun is. There is no importance of the mother. There is no substitute of the mother's mother. There is a husband, a wife, a girlfriend, a boyfriend. There is no mother's mother. Have you ever heard of the mother's mother? No, I will not hear. I am just telling you that there are certain things that are not substitute of the class. The substitute of the class is not made today. Online or offline. And a standard textbook, prominent expert. Ka. Okay, you please take. Yeah, you know, we all are human beings. I once argued with my uh, dear friend in uh, my university 
with a psychologist professor, eminent scholar, and we are friends. So we were talking about our vice chancellor who was under the influence. So I was telling that he was very much influence. I was not understanding our talk. उसने कहा ये तो ह्यूमन नेचर है हर आदमी होता है मैंने कहा नहीं ऐसा नहीं होता है बहुत सारे लोग इन्फ्लुएंस पे नहीं होते उसने कहा नहीं तुम भी होते हो मैंने कहा नहीं उसने कहा तुम अपनी वाइफ से होते होगे तुम्हें पता नहीं चलता है एंड आई नोटिस थ्री फोर डेज ही वाज राइट कि हाउ सम टाइम आई थॉट आई एम नॉट इन्फ्लुएंस बाय एनीवन बट आई चेंज वन ऑफ माय डिसीजन बिकॉज़ माय वाइफ हैड टोल्ड अब समझ आ रहा है so all human beings are vulnerable about political or cultural influences but this is the test of your integrity of your personality ke hame koi cheez bahut pasand hai par uske bare mein bura likhna padega samajh aa raha nahi aa raha koi cheez bahut na pasand hai uske bare mein acha likhna padega like when i started teaching history in my early 20s so i was at that time obviously more out of spoken than now i am more matured i would say to so bluntly kuch bol deta tha rajasthan mein gaya and i said ki all ye jo kahawat hai ki pran jaye par vachan na jaye ye sab kahani hai aisa kuch nahi hai humne pure rajputon ki history padhi hai aur ek se ek dhoka diya hai ek raja jaswant singh the suna aapne Raja Jaswant Singh was with Dara Shiko. After few months, he was with Aurangzeb. Then after few months, he was with Dara Shiko, and then finally again with Aurangzeb. Three times, he has been passed out. Like in Karnataka, it is happening. And now, who will go? Who knows? So then, I said, "Where did this go? Where did it 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 go? अपना स्टूडेंट आया उसने कहा सर आप राजपूत के बारे में ऐसा कैसे बोल सकते हैं हमारे राजपूतों में ये शान है वो शान है देन आई स्टार्टेड करेक्टिंग यार ऐसे राजस्थान में तो नहीं बोलना है वंस इन बॉम्बे आई टोल अबाउट शिवाजी शिवाजी वाज रेगुलरली प्लंडरिंग इंटायर महाराष्ट्र एंड कलेक्टिंग चौथ अकॉर्डिंग टू ऑल हिस्टोरियन इट इज प्लंडर अब वो आ गए चार पांच मराठी भाई हाउ कैन यू कॉल शिवाजी इज लार्जर देन लाइफ साइज भी लोग हैं जिनके बारे में कहा जाता है गॉड के बाद एक गणेश है और एक शिवाजी एंड यू कॉन्ट से एनी थिंग बट हिस्ट्री में शिवाजी एंड मराठा के बारे में जो लिखा आप पढ़ोगे औरंगजेब या अकबर के बारे में जो लिखा है पढ़ोगे पॉलिटिकल इन्फ्लुएंस होगा आपका थैंक्स टू अवर कल्चर बट वाइल्ड स्टडिंग नेक्स्ट फाइव मंथ्स ऑफ हिस्ट्री आई एम श्योर ईच बॉय वुड बिकम मैन ईच गर्ल वुड बिकम वुमेन इन अवर क्लास in terms of maturity and then you can control those influences so it would happen naturally as i told it is human but at the end you have to control all your influences okay that's so you want to say something on this no i think whatever the political changes are happening is not going to reflect uh, in your question paper is it i don't think sir hmm. upsc remains a very uh, objective uh, commission so it is not going to reflect whatever changes yeah i i i think i i don't think for now uh, because as long as things are there in the syllabus we will go by the books we will go by the syllabus yes and uh, it is not going to change because if we talk about the current government or the whatever you think it has it has been there for the last some years but you don't see any change whatever i, I just want to add please sir यू नो हिस्ट्री में होता है क्या है एक रिसर्च होता है हाईएस्ट लेवल इट इज फर्स्ट पब्लिश इन हिस्टोरिकल जर्नल्स देयर इज अ बॉडी कॉल्ड इंडियन हिस्टोरिकल इंडियन हिस्टोरिकल रिसर्च सेंटर हियर इन फिरोजशाह रोड आईसीएचआर राइट दे वुड फर्स्ट पब्लिश वंस इट इज पब्लिश देन इट वुड बी ब्रॉट फर्स्ट टू एमफिल एमए लेवल सिलेबस देन इट वुड बी ब्रॉट आफ्टर 2 3 इयर्स इन ग्रेजुएशन लेवल it will take 5 year minimum to come to graduation level upsc would take after 6 year by the time tum logo ka nirman ho chuka ho you going to be going or not you would be passed so at least for the next 5 years what i know ya we let us koi bhi research hoga upsc mein nahi aane wala you are getting my point because the process is very lengthy it will take time secondly 
as sir rightly said that upsc is very professional body in fact one of the few institution of india on which you can rely blindly like i have a doubt about election commission <laughs> i don't know about you but i have no doubt about indian army indian army apni neutral hai bcci pe doubt hai mujhe ki iska jo selection hota hai ye beimani hoti hai ये बहुत बचपन से मैंने सुना है किसी ने अच्छा खिलाड़ी को ड्रॉप कर दिया बेकार खिलाड़ी को ले लिया यू हर्ड इट समाइम के श्रीकांत का बेटा था मदन लाल का बेटा था अभी भी तेंदुलकर का बेटा को बहुत हाइप हो रहा है पता नहीं आएगा कि नहीं बट हु नोस कि आ जाए कि तेंदुलकर का बेटा है बीसीसीआई पे मुझे डाउट है बट सुप्रीम कोर्ट पे डाउट नहीं है लोएस्ट कोर्ट पे डाउट होता है हमेशा यूपीएससी पे डाउट नहीं है हरियाणा पब्लिक सर्विस पे पक्का डाउट है You're getting or not? उसका चेयरमैन जेल जा चुका है बिहार पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन का चेयरमैन जेल जा चुका है राजस्थान पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन का चेयरमैन जेल जा चुका है वन वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट आई वॉज टोल्ड बाई सेक्रेटरी ऑफ यू पी एस सी फॉर्मर मिस्टर लेबर सेक्रेट कोल सेक्रेटरी ओके संजय श्रीवास्तव साहब आई एस सेवेंटी नाइन बैच हमारे यहाँ मॉक में आते हैं अच्छा तो वो पांच साल यूपीएससी में सेक्रेटरी थे तो आई लर्न लॉट फ्रॉम हिम कि इंटरव्यू में क्या क्या करते हैं वो ही सेड सिंस इंडिपेंडेंस टिल नाउ नॉट अ सिंगल सन और डॉटर ऑफ यूपीएससी मेंबर बिकेम आई लेकिन यूपीएससी के कई कलर का बच्चा आई बन गया कितना इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट है कि मेंबर का उसने कहा कि बैठा वो जरूर कोई प्रेलिम से फेल कर गया कोई मेन में फेल कर गया कोई इंटरव्यू में फेल कर गया अब इमेजिन करो कि यूपीएससी का मेंबर का बेटा या बेटी उसी पैनल में आए एक तो वो नहीं रह सकता एज पर द लॉ उस पैनल से उसको उठना ही पड़ेगा बट अपने साथी को तो कह ही सकता था ना यार देख लेना अपने ही भतीजा यू गेटिंग नॉट लेकिन नहीं हुआ दैट मींस इट इज वेरी वेरी ट्रांसपेरेंट बॉडी एंड इट्स इंटीग्रिटी एंड प्रोफेशनलिज्म कैन नॉट बी डाउटेड वेदर मेकिंग क्वेश्चन और इवेल्युएशन और इंटरव्यूज एटलीस्ट इसके बारे में तो मैंने जितने भी लोगों से सुना है जो लोग बाकी स्टेट में भी काम कर चुके हैं यूपीएससी में भी काम कर चुके हैं तो अबाउट यूपीएससी देर इज नो प्रॉब्लम एट ऑल तो वो हिस्ट्री के क्वेश्चन हो या पॉलिटी के क्वेश्चन हो वो प्रोफेशनल से ही लेंगे स्कॉलर से ही लेंगे एंड दे ट्राई टू मेक इट बैलेंस फ्रॉम नॉर्थ इंडिया साउथ इंडिया ईस्ट इंडिया वेस्ट इंडिया सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी स्टेट यूनिवर्सिटी राइट एंड देर ओन फिलोसफी Okay, what they want to check through those questionnaires, how it should be different from university question. They would be most applied to the current India and current world rather than a static portion as we did in college days. इसलिए UPSC के question वही history के एकदम अलग से होते हैं. Like one question was that both Gandhi and Ambedkar wanted to uplift Dalit, but their approaches were different. Are you getting? A question I have. डिस्कस द रेलिवेंस ऑफ गांधी इन ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी अब ये किसी किताब में नहीं है और ये क्वेश्चन अगर गांधी को दे दो वो फेल कर जाते हैं क्योंकि गांधी डाइड इन ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी क्वेश्चन था इन ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी दैट मीन एप्लीकेशन बेस्ड वट आर द इशूज ऑफ ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी वी विल डिस्कस इन क्लास दैट इज वाई दिस स्टडी ऑफ हिस्ट्री इट सेल्फ इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड आई वुड आई एम श्योर यू वुड एंजॉय द प्रोसेस रदर देन द एंड इट सेल्फ राइट I'll just give an example. Yeah, please. When the uh, Ram Jan Bhumi movement gathered traction in uh, the scholarly sections or in historical sections, one of the very important topic was on the historicity of Ramayan and Mahabharat. In fact, in Upinder Singh, you will find there is a uh, a page on historicity, and everywhere people were <coughs> taking a clue that possibly this year a question will be asked from historicity of Ramayan and Mahabharat, and every year. people used to train their students for that but it has not happened so i'll just give you one evidence uh, other questions are that do we have to remember so many facts one student has been asking sir that do we have no, to remember no, no, so no, many no. facts no 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 everything you know that, you know even in your life you even in your life you don't have to remember so many facts but core you would automatically remember few facts are important few dates are important few persons are important but once you read it twice thrice four time you heard it in classes it would be automatically in your mind so it's all about you know 
you have lot of uh, baggage of past apprehensions about a subject so first you remove that baggage okay there is hardly any such problem as far as date person and facts koi aisa subject nahi jisme facts yaad na karna padta ho facts to yaad karni padega chemistry mein to pura chart hai hai nahi hai to har subject mein ek minimum facts to hai but if you are remembering facts in isolation you would forget if you are connecting fact with a story just giving an example shole dekhiye shole movie dhanno kaun thi dhanno ghodi ka naam tumhe ghodi ka bhi naam yaad hai 1975 ki movie hai bahut sari movie dekhi hogi jisme hero ka naam nahi malum hoga am i right but the way the story of shole was narrated by writer director is such uska ek ek chhota character we remember it i hope you understand it we will narrate in shole style don't worry okay yes, yes as they say that we are not going to follow a lucent based approach there is a very popular book in market for competitive examination lucent's history so we will not teach in that way that you have to just remember facts wo b ed aur ssc ka ho gaye bachcho ke liye waisa nahi hoga it is not going to be in that way you will have a context wo aaj ek ek school ka exam tha तो एक पेपर में देख रहा था उसमें बच्चों के एलेवेंथ स्टैंडर्ड के एंट्रेंस का गिव मी ब्लड आई विल गिव यू फ्रीडम किसने कहा उस बच्चे ने गांधी लगाया हुआ था मैंने कहा तो गलत है अरे नहीं ये गांधी का ही था मैंने यूट्यूब पे देखा था <laughs> तो मैंने कहा यार ये गलत हो गया तो मैं पढ़ाना छोड़ दूंगा <laughs> उसमें सुभाष चंद्र बोस का ऑप्शन था योगी टू माई पॉइंट तो अब ये क्या होता है कि यूट्यूब से या इधर से आप कोई फैक्ट इस तरह का याद कर लो वो गड़बड़ हो जाएगा तो उस तरह का फैक्ट नहीं पूछेगा आपसे राइट टू एंड हाफ आवर टू एंड हाफ आवर्स बट या फाइव थर्टी यस इवनिंग बैच एंड देर विल बी ऑनलाइन बोथ इट विल बी इन द सेम फॉर्मेट विल हैव ऑफलाइन स्टूडेंट्स वन आंसर ऑफ याना नो याना एक्चुअली ऑल टीचर्स वुड टीच इन द सेम स्पीड ऑफ ह्यूमन बींग्स आर डिफरेंट तो डोंट वरी uh like in gs we may go little faster in optional we have all the time in the world means uh, we do not have to cover in a specific lectures we have a time so our lectures may go say 10% more than we planned keeping in mind ke you understood it or not why because sometime when we were in the midst of lecture Uh, you ask some question she asked some question he asked some questions the questions are important because it is coming from you so we take it so it may go delayed delay in gs we can't entertain too much too much questions you understand this because a the number of candidate in gs would be always 400 plus not in optional b in gs we will always have a time constraint every teacher even you because you have to cover it well in time so in optional we have more time so i'm sure each teacher will take sufficient time and their speed obviously would be little slow in optional than gs right so do not worry about the speed also yes any other query so some have? students are asking that they have not studied in crt uh, so how to don't understand? worry actually if you read it is good but uh, one good thing about history is that r s sharma Satish Chandra, Bipin Chandra were author of original NCERT 11th and 12th standard. Now, if you are reading already, say India's Ancient Past by R. S. Sharma, published by Oxford University Press. So, what he did in 2004, since luckily I was student of his son, Mr. Gyan Prakash Sharma. So, his son was modern history historian, and R. S. Sharma Sahab was. ancient historian he died in 2007 i suppose so he wrote ncert's extended form when wajpay government had changed ncert you get my point in protest in fact in his uh, introduction he has complained also that why government you know keep playing with history but history has always been used by political class whether it is Aurangzeb in medieval time, he closed down the department of history. Akbar had created it. Hitler, 
he had used entire mechanism to change the history of Germany in which Germans were declared as purest Aryan race and from church to school to college entire textbooks was changed. In Pakistan after independence or their country their entire military regime changed the history of origin of Pakistan and they started origin of Pakistan from 7, 11, 12 from Muhammad bin Qasim as the origin or genesis of Pakistan, right? Pakistan word was coined in 1931, 34 rather, by Chaudhary Rahmat Ali. You get my point or not? So how foolish those writers were in history. So in India also, many politicians do but as we have already discussed, it's not going to change in UPSC. Mein. But I cannot take guarantee about UPPCS, Haryana PCS. Although there is no change in history in there. You will be happy that the papers of their history are GSK. It's completely normal, hai, just like UPSC. It's the same. So that means that the scholars are the same. And most likely even politicians know that their audience is something else. Their audience is not you. Ho. वैसे भी उनको मालूम है तुम वोट देने तो जाओगे नहीं जिस दिन इलेक्शन होगा तुम दिल्ली में हो अभी कर्नाटक के कितने लोग दिल्ली में हैं यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस और नॉट तो उनका ऑडियंस वो है जिसको हिस्ट्री से कोई मतलब नहीं है तो यू डोंट वरी एट ऑल अबाउट हिस्ट्री राइट सिलेबस इट्स ऑल यस हाउ टू स्टार्ट वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री सर वुड टेल डोंट वरी निकिता राइट नाउ वंस वी स्टार्ट यू वुड लर्न यस आई वुड सजेस्ट दैट फॉर द नेक्स्ट वन मंथ यू कैन रीड सम ऑफ द बेसिक टेक्स्ट बुक्स for yeah, world history, that, you can read the new NCRTs. That would be sufficient for now. Class 9th or 10th and 11th. Hmm. You can NCRT easily is always that. safest. And it is very recommended also. Very hmm. good. You should read at least. How many books to be read? Don't worry. Once we start the course, how to prepare for maps, how to remember the things. It will be taken care of because hmm. we are not getting into the details now. But it will be taken care of by the specific the faculties. <coughs> Seats, etc. You can talk to management. There is no problem as such. Yes. Uh, what is called early bird? Asa kuch hai nahi Haan, na. But no, nothing like that. But I would suggest that this is the right time for you to start your optional. Because hmm. although we have an optional batch in October also coming up, but why you should join if possible, as far as possible now? Because one, you will get time to write a lot of answers. You will not be scared of uh, prelims examination coming over. You will not still join that uh, uh, prelims test series uh, chain that actually kicks from January month and you will get a lot of time to internalize also. Hmm. So you can come over if you are in Delhi or through portal you can connect, keep asking doubts and it, we have seen that uh, the students who join in October batch they face some stress after February. They become irregular. So it, it is natural, it is natural because prelims is a headache these days. So it is highly recommended, irrespective of the optional, whichever optional, you should start early because optional will take some time for you to actually master over. Hmm. Yeah, Moshav Kumar is asking that I never studied history, never had humanity background. You know, almost 80% students are of the same. So do not worry at all. In fact, civil service is one exam. When they start preparing, the first thing they do it, they leave the subject behind which they studied in graduation. Am I right? Sabse zada bevafai engineers karta hai apne subject ke saath. Civil, mechanical, electrical. Am I right? Computer engineers ko I can understand ki computer hai ni UPSC mein. Lekin civil, electrical, mechanical to hai. Electronics so, and communication nahi hai. Lekin usse koi fark nahi padta. In fact, uh, sometime, not studying a subject is a blessing. Hmm. You know how? This is history, but sometimes, not always. Uske andar ho sakta hai kuch preconceived ideas ho jo galat ho. Malo history usne achhi jagah se nahi padi. Bekar teacheron ke saath padh liya. Un unfortunately, har subject mein aisa hota hai ki history kahani ki tarah agar bata di gayi, facts galat ho gaya, interpretation wrong. And if he comes to attend this classes, she or he will take more time because they have to remove those wrong things. Now, those who never studied, they have to start from zero. You're getting my point or not? This is what I said. Sometimes it is blessing. Of course, those who studied history and decently well from whichever university and college, 
they may pick it much faster than you but the gap between you and them could be hardly 3 to 4 months not more than that uske baad sab barabar hai abhi like you are at zero level she or he may be at 4 to 5 level but after 6 months you may be at 7 level she or he may still be 5 to 6 level that depends upon your work that depends upon our our support because everybody is not blessed also let me tell you to get quality coaching that is for sure that we know it very well that unfortunately because i taught it more than 30 coaching institutions in india and i know the standards and sometimes i wonder yaar is bacche ne 1 lakh rupya de diya 1 lakh rupya de diya lekin teacher to yaar 90 percent uska level ka hai nahi ssc level ka nahi hai oh is padha raha that is unfortunate part i hope you also know it this is not only about is i'm talking it is about medical je also it is about uh, neat also whether it is in kota or delhi or any other places but some institutions maybe 5% maybe 6% have made their mark and consistently made and i have no doubt at all not because i'm here even when i was not here at wajiram still i would recommend my students to come wajira the reason was that because I, though my friends have opened some coaching institutions in delhi some very dear friend are teaching nearby also which i would not name but i would not recommend them because i knew ke yahan pe bunch of faculty itna acha experience wala ek chhat ke niche aur kahi nahi pure india mein nahi you get my point so that is why I would strongly recommend ke whether GS or whether any optional you have taken. This would be the and, and the one reason I have noticed is the man who is heading. I have never seen such person of integrity as well as knowledge of GS because uh, I know him since last 15 odd years. And each time whenever I would have any doubt, though I may be working in different places, but I would consult him for my student for myself etc so he's like teachers teachers is hota na kuch khiladiyon ka khiladi sachin tendulkar brad man aisa hota hai to ravinder sir is like teachers teachers hai wo aur unka ek guidelines hum logon ko lagatar milta hai exact What was the socio-political background in which reformation happened? Isn't it? There is a very famous uh, statement by Hegel that for reformation to happen anywhere, Renaissance is a must precursor. So, <clears throat> GS is just a tangential approach. I think that goes for all the subjects, sir. Actually, you know, in GS, our focus is as per the syllabus objective or subjective in optional when we go we also discuss what are the discussions among scholars and each topic when we go suppose permanent settlement we would give a structure causes what are the features and what were the impact in gs you don't need it uh, we will cover in permanent settlement if we are taking in uh, gs in 10 to 15 minutes but in optional, it may take entire class. 
maybe two hours. Are you getting? So in terms of both quantity and quality, each topic, as I told, we complete in greatest possible depth in optional paper. The same world war one, when he would teach in uh, GS, it would be different. Some of the points would say same, same, but major debate part of World War One and Two in the optional would be definitely much much more in depth as well as in variety. In GS, the approach is something of everything. In optional, it is everything of something. Sir, uh, one question that is very genuine is that how students should actually make the use of one month? Yeah, that's from now NCRT. on. Best Please read NCRTs. New NCRTs. Before you come, you read some NCRT that is always good. 9 to 11th, 9 to 12th, right? And uh, world history, you can read 9, 10th, 11th, 11th yes, and, yes. and Indian history, modern Indian history, you can read 11th and 12th. Or you can read that one uh, book of modern India, Bipan Chandra, because he was the author of NCRT mm -hmm. also. So at least you should have some basic understanding. Always start with simple book. Don't start with complicated book. Like the moment you start ancient history, wonder that was India of Ail Basham. Then you may struggle because of the language and the style. But you start with Dien Jha, an introduction to ancient history. It would be like Kekwa. Hmm. And then you can easily understand. Okay? So always start with the easier one. So yes, you can score 300 plus. People have been doing well. It, uh, it gets for history optional also. As I said, hmm. an average student who completes the paper scores around 240 to 250. And if you prepare well, then you have a very high chance of 270 to 80. Above that, again, it depends upon a number of factors. One of them is uh, the scoring pattern also, how the person who is actually checking your paper. It may happen. There is a bit of subjectivity. Uh, maps do matter. So don't worry about that. I would not say that you worry about the marks now. Some mm -hmm. of the questions, uh, most of the questions we have answered. Nithyu is asking one question that online student she or he is losing something. Kuch disadvantage hoga. Mujhe lagta hai ke mere disadvantage hoga ke I can see your faces online. Wale ka face nahi dekh paata, man. Ek ye hota. But I don't think ke aaj ke technology mein, siwa ye ke ek psychological difference to ho sakta hai ke like you can feel, you can see with the eyes, you can see the alertness, etc. But as far as the, because I taught 10 years back also online. And that also, sir, for the faculties, it is a disadvantage because we find yeah. that in the beginning classes, students turn on their camera and after three classes, something happens that their right to privacy comes into picture and most of them turn off the camera and it is a big disadvantage for us. Yeah, we don't know whether she is or he is taking interest or not. Ha, Somebody is lying on sofa <laughs> and as watching some horror show. <laughs> Are you <laughs> not? So, I mean, maine, we sat in a moment and there were a lot of cameras. So, the buffering hoti thi, so it was very boring at that time, right? But now thanks to this 4G, 5G and the technology which we have, which is uninterrupted, whether audio quality, video quality. So, dono ke apne pluses and minuses hai. I mean, whichever format suits you, offline or online, up is format ke jagade mein ap mat padho. Ke it is not making any big difference. And as far as our successful students are concerned, dono hi jaga hai. Or serious candidate bhi dono jaga hai, non serious candidate bhi dono jaga hai. Okay? Online, mere hisab se, school kids ke liye sab se khatarnaak hai. Uh, up to 12th level ka, because the very purpose of schooling is dying, even up to college level. But coaching institution mein, you have already done it, all those online, offline. But unke liye to I strongly, because I took classes in university online also, and wo undergrads ya postgraduate students ke liye bhoat hi khatarnaak hai. That should not happen, right? But for professional coachings, it hardly matters, right? Yes. So last question for the day because uh, yeah, we, we have, have to already... wrap up. And more questions if you have for online students, you can put it on the portal. We'll try to answer. Yes, definitely. Uh, any any tips for preparation with job? You have to be regular and consistent. The thing with job is that you have to be very particular about your uh, maintaining discipline of time. You have very less time, but it can be done. 
I remember myself uh, being in uh, in touch with one of my friends, Mitali Shetty. She was a dentist, and she was a professor, and who prepared and cleared this exam, getting 55 rank with her, and she was married also. So you have all those equations coming into it. So with technology and everything, the best part is that even if you are in Bangalore, you are an IT professional, or even in Toronto, so you can attend our live classes, our uh, recorded lectures. You can post questions to us. Toronto or India, back will come. Sorry, sir. Will get in interview. Mein milega. That person will meet yes, in interview yes. or prelims. Mein bhi yes, yes. So that is that is one thing. Uh, otherwise, uh, not much problem now because with technology coming in here, uh, I would suggest that only one thing that you have to be particular. Everybody, whether you are working professional, you have just come out of college, is being consistent. You have to be consistent in all these five and a half months. Please attend uh, not only the lectures, but you have to be specific and take everything that we are ready to offer, willing to offer in terms of sectional tests and everything. Yeah, Nishant is asking if we study optional thoroughly, then do we need to study GS history separately? Not at all. No. You not at all. To. That is what I said in the very beginning. Okay, one of the advantage is that you have to study in detail you don't have to worry about at least that 20 question. And if you just do your homework out of 20, 18 to 17, you can do correctly, yes. which your other friends cannot score even 10. And that edge which you would have of eight questions, six questions, that can be game changer. You're getting my point. So that is what some sub many people you remember before 2013, we had uh, prelims with optional paper also. You know that? in subjects also prelims. and at that time the most popular subject was history mm -hmm. most popular subject the reason being was that most predictable question would come that, that suppose if i prepared gandhi thoroughly so i know that if there are 100 questions possible on in prelims on gandhi and i have prepared all those 100 plus then i can answer that one whereas in economics the problem is it is very dynamic it is changing and then the students, even who have done economic honors, would struggle. So that is what history is by and large called a static, at least at this level. So a good number, good part is since it's static. So even the questions are very much predictable. Only the language and the style, they would change, which of course we will help how to catch those languages, right? So I think uh, this okay. Yes. So I think uh, we'll be seeing you again on 15th. Before that, if you have any doubt, you can approach the management and uh, we'll, we keep coming here. Sir is also taking care of our uh, interview program. So you can meet sir or any of the other faculties. Rohan sir and Praveen sir was uh, not today present, but they'll be taking care of paper yeah. one. So don't worry. We are also available for our GS batches. So feel free, enjoy and uh, develop a historical thought. Thank you. All. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.